Hi everyone! About a week ago Mihai showed off these 3D printed cages that he's using to contain the desiccant inside of his dry feeder. Now in my dry feeder over here I just have the desiccant strewn loosely across the bottom of the box and this is actually quite annoying because it means that to recharge this desiccant I have to scoop it all out, put it on a tray, put that in the oven and then once it's dry pour it all back in. And the issue that you especially have in that case is that this desiccant tends to get everywhere. Because these beads are hard and bouncy, yet at the same time, they are also sticky to some degree. And so this stuff really tends to get everywhere. And so I wondered, can I 3D print a cage that contains this desiccant while you are drying it? It turns out you can, and it's actually not that hard. So here I have a basic ABS box, and if we look through it like this, you can see that the bottom here has this grid pattern in it. And then you can put your desiccant inside of it, and then finally you just add a lid on the top to contain the desiccant. Now the next question is whether you can dry the desiccant while it's inside of there, and in fact you can. Now the general recommendation for drying this stuff is 120 degrees in the oven, but I found that if I put it in my food dehydrator at just 80 degrees, it also recharges up to this nice orange color. And at that 80 degrees, these ABS boxes hold up just fine. Here's the Fusion 360 design for the cage, and as you can see, it's really just a hollow box. And then on the top here, there's a little locating groove where the top lid can go into. Now the secret here, if you could even call it that, is to go into your slicer and select zero top and bottom layers, and then the bottom of the box, and also of the top lid if you print that separately, uh, becomes infill. And then you just select an infill density and a pattern that you like. Now I initially went for lines infill to save on a little bit of material, but that gave a really floppy end result, so in the end I just settled on triangles. Another interesting idea is to use gyroid infill, because in that case the walls too can become infill and those then become permeable as well. So I'll leave a link to a relevant Reddit thread down below. Once you've 3D printed a box and a lid, you can just pour some desiccant into the box and then put the lid on like this. Now to keep the lid in place, I use just a little bit of glue, specifically this Patex 100% glue. And I just put a little bit of it on a piece of paper like this. And then I just use the back end of a small drill bit to just smear it out across the inner lip here so that the lid would remain in place. This doesn't have to be the world's best ever glue joint, just enough to keep that lid in place. Now, you could probably also do this with acetone, but I didn't really have a good way to apply the acetone to this inner lip here. Uh, but if you use a syringe, that might be possible. The other thing you might want to try is doing all of this in PETG. I think that will not hold up to the temperature inside of the food dehydrator, but I haven't tested that yet. I'll probably design a new dry feeder in the near future, and now there are three improvements that I want to make. First, I want the desiccant contained in cages like this, rather than having it strewn loosely across the bottom. Second, I want to give myself the option at least of adding a small and cheap hygrometer like this one to the front of the box. And finally, the hole at the moment for the filament to come out is in the lid here. And this is actually quite annoying because now I first have to add the roll of filament like this. Then I have to take the filament off of the spool, thread that through the hole here, and then I can finally put the lid on like so. And that just becomes a whole lot more convenient if the hole is just part of the base. So that probably means that the base will become quite a bit taller and then the lid will be much smaller and flatter. Now at the moment, this thing is small enough to print on an Ender 3. So if I take a ruler like this real quick, you can see that the total length of this thing is about just under 22 centimeters, so that fits on the bed of an Ender 3, and I do hope I can keep it that way. If you'd like me to record as I design this thing in Fusion 360, please leave a comment to that effect down below. Stay tuned for the next video. Thanks a lot for watching, and have a good night.